Okay, so everybody, we're going to start lying down on our back today. This is your 60-minute fire mandala class. Oh, why did I say back? I'm in belly. <laughs> That's a great start. Sorry, guys. Lying down on your belly. Place one hand on top of the other and then let the forehead fall onto the back of the hand. I'm recording this one for the video hub as well, so that was a great start. <laughs> Take a nice deep breath in through the nose. And a big sigh out through the mouth. Take another one if you need. Let it all go. Let all of the worries, all of the stresses, all of the to-do lists that you had on your mind this morning slowly float away. You're not pushing them away permanently. Just a temporary thing. Right now, we only want to focus on our yoga practice, whether it's the body, whether it's the breath. Whether it's observations of how you feel as you flow through your mandala. But everything else, everybody else can wait. Notice in this first yin posture, if you're holding any tension in the shoulders, in the face, Maybe in the glutes, the backs of the legs. See if you can match the pace of the mind to the pace of your breath. So right now it's nice and slow. It's controlled. Take one more breath. And then working your way up to your sphinx pose. Keep the eyes closed if they are. Elbows go underneath the shoulders. Forearms are parallel. Spread the fingertips nice and wide. If you're at home and you have a cushion or a pillow, you can always place it underneath your chest to give you a little bit of extra height. The chin can drop to the chest, or if you want, you can lift the head up, whichever one feels a little nicer for you. If you lift the head, you might get a little bit of a deeper sensation on the, on the spine. So as always, we start our mandala practice with a little bit of yin. We prepare the specific areas of the body that we'll work on in our mandala vinyasas. And not only that, we want to use this time to set the breath. We want to use, use this time to arrive on the mat. And that's so easy to say, that phrase. But what it means is when you book into a yoga class, it's a click of a finger. When you get into your car, you get on the bike, you walk to your studio, wherever it is you are practicing today. It's pretty much an automatic movement. We don't even think about it. We roll out our mat because it's something that we've done. It's our routine. But maybe throughout that whole process, our mind is somewhere else. We just want to use this time to make sure that our mind is caught up with our body. Our body is here. So let everything else be as well. See if you can let the shoulders fall away from the ears. See if you can have a teeny tiny bit of activation through the arms, keeping the strength in this pose. 
understanding where you need the activation and where you need the relaxation. See if you can relax the glutes, the legs, the feet. Taking five more breaths here. Being aware of that sensation that you feel on the back. Notice if there's any changes to the breath with that sensation. This is your body figuring out places that you feel tight or restricted. And then release, let the chest drop down towards the floor. Hands underneath the shoulders and push yourself back, come into a kneeling position. We'll come into our half hero's pose. So one leg stays, chin on the earth. The other leg extends out in front. So have the, whichever leg it is, if, the, if it's the right leg, you can roll that calf out, make room for the thigh. Have the thighs parallel. If this is too intense, you could always sit on a cushion or a brick. We are actually going to work our way down onto the floor. If you have a cushion or brick underneath your sit bone, don't work your way down. See if you can get to the forearms. If you feel good on the forearms, you could always go a little bit further. Maybe go onto your back. Arms reach up overhead. The target, target area for this yin posture is the hip flexor of that bent leg. If you have any sensation or uncomfortableness in the foot or ankle, or if you feel like that knee is lifting up a lot and it's too much on the foot, then come out, come a little bit higher. Finding what works for you. And then closing the eyes. Breathing into the pulse. So today's mandala is the air element. We're going to do a lot of chest openers, a lot of back bends. And to physically make a back bend position with our body. We don't just need the spine. It's about the shoulders, the hip flexors, the wrists. We're focusing on lengthening the front side of the body. When we work with that air mandala, we're playing with the love, the love, the kindness, the generosity in our body. So if you have any blockages where you feel like you don't express as much love as you should or as much love as you know that you're capable of expressing, whether it's to yourself or whether it's to the people that surround you, So whether you set your own focus or intention for today's practice or whether your focus is purely to be kind and to show love to yourself. I'm just going to hold it here for five more breaths. And then release, walk the hands up. Releasing that right leg, give it a little shake, maybe give the knee, the thigh, a little squeeze. And then taking it onto the left side. Took the left chin under, roll the calf out. Make sure the top of the foot is on the other, on the floor. Or if you did left last time, do right this time. 
and then working your way down. Maybe this side could be different, knees are different, hips are different. So have a play with each level. And then find in your pose. We do say guideline, try and keep the left and the right balanced. But if you've got a past injury, then maybe you know that one side is a little more tender. If you ever do have an injury in yoga, you still have to work with your body at present. So quite often we have it in our mind that we've been injured before and that we need to be careful. But what you really need to do is observe every moment, every sensation as it is right now. Enjoying these moments of stillness. Not wanting the body to move. There's going to be a lot of that coming soon. Taking five more breaths. And then slowly rising all the way up, extending that left leg, give the thigh, give the knee a little squeeze. Notice the difference left and right, and then all of a sudden that sensation goes. Crossing the legs, planting the palms, finding your vinyasa. Take it nice and slowly. Rolling through any variations of your vinyasa, cobra, baby cobra, up dog. Down with facing dog, take it back. Moving the legs. So five breaths. Take tiny micro movements with the heels. And then when you're ready, find still. Lifting that downward facing dog. Ready for our first round. On an inhale, lifting the right leg up into the sky. Fall and triangle, cross the right leg over. Reach the left hand high, make it a back bend by reaching it over to the right. Exhale, drop the hand down to the earth. Three legged down dog on your inhale. Runners lunge, step it through on your exhale. Let the knee hover, take a back bend with the arms on your inhale. Skandasana to the back on your exhale. High lunge, reach the arms up, take a back bend on your inhale. A hand to the earth, runner's lunge, exhale. Three legged down dog on your inhale. Wild thing, let the bum drop to the floor on your exhale. Three legged down dog, lift high on your inhale. Chaturanga on your exhale. Lift the chest, inhale. Downward facing dog on your exhale. Right leg lift, inhale. 
fallen triangle on your exhale. Open it wide on your inhale. Hand down on your exhale. Three-legged inhale. Runner's lunge on your exhale. Hover the knee back bend on your inhale. Skandasana to front on your exhale. High lunge, take a back bend on your inhale. Runner's lunge on your exhale. Three-legged down dog on your inhale. Wild thing, sit bones lower on your exhale. Three-legged down dog on your inhale. Chaturanga on your exhale. Back bend, inhale. Down dog on your exhale. Left leg, inhale, straight to the opposite side. Fallen triangle, exhale. Open it wide, inhale. Hand down on your exhale. Three-legged inhale. Runner's lunge on your exhale. Hover knee back bend inhale. Skandasana on your exhale. High lunge to the back on your inhale. Back bend. Runner's lunge exhale. Three-legged dog inhale. Wild thing to lower on your exhale. Three-legged dog on your inhale. Chaturanga goes forward, exhale. Back bend, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Left leg, inhale. Fallen triangle, exhale. Open it, back bend, inhale. Hand down on your exhale. Three-legged inhale. Runners on your exhale. Hover knee back bend inhale. Skandasana to front on your exhale. High lunge back bend on your inhale. Runners lunge on your exhale. Three legged inhale. Wild thing to lower on your exhale. Three legged dog inhale. Chaturanga on your exhale. Back bend, inhale. Downward facing dog on your exhale. Drop the knees down to the floor. Come into your Anahatasana. So take the hands forward. Let the chest melt down towards the earth. Maybe you drop the forehead. Maybe you drop the chin and look towards the fingertips. Keep it there for three. For one. Either you slide it forward for variation of Anahatasana two, or you play with your inversion taking a headstand. So Anahatasana two, the hips go further forward than the knees. Chest is down, chin is down, you gaze forward. Sit bones shine up to the sky. If you're in headstand, it could be interlaced, it could be tripod. Wherever you are, you've got five breaths. Whether you want to close your eyes in your Anahatasana, belting the chest down, pushing the hips up, lovely. You can have toes tucked or untucked. Hold wherever you are for three. For two. For one. Downward facing dog will all meet there. Hips lift nice and high. Gaze to the hands, step or jump the feet forwards. Lengthen inhale, fold on your exhale. Back bend, reach the arms up, inhale. Hands to heart center, exhale. Lovely, arms out wide, nice big inhale. Hands to heart center, exhale. Inhale, back bend, reach. Forward fold on your exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Chaturanga on your exhale. Lift, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Right leg high on your inhale. Fall and triangle, exhale. Reach the arm back, bend, inhale. Lower the hand on your exhale. Two more of those. 
Inhale, reach back, bend with the arm. Exhale, hand down. One more. Inhale, feel that lovely twist. Exhale, hand down. Three-legged dog on your inhale. Runners lunge on your exhale. Knee hovers back, bend the arms, inhale. Back to runners lunge to the front on your exhale. Two more, back bend, inhale, gaze high. Exhale, runners. Last one, inhale, back bend. Skandasana to the back on your exhale. High lunge to the back on your inhale. Hands down, runners on your exhale. Three-legged dog, inhale. Fall and shine, uh, sorry, wild thing on your exhale. Three-legged down dog on your inhale. Scorpion the leg, take a chaturanga on your exhale. Lift, inhale. Down dog, exhale. Right leg lift, inhale. Fall and triangle, cross it over, exhale. Reach the arm on your inhale. Lower it down, exhale. Three-legged inhale. Runners lunge on your exhale. Hover knee back, bend inhale. Scan down to front on your exhale. High lunge to the front on your inhale. Runners lunge on your exhale. Three-legged dog on your inhale. Wild thing to lower on your exhale. We'll do two rounds. Lift the hips for full wild thing. Lower the hips down on your exhale. Two more. Lift the hips. Full wild thing. Exhale, you lower. Inhale to lift the hips nice and high. Exhale down. Three-legged down dog on your inhale. Scorpion the leg. Chaturanga on your exhale. Lift. Inhale. Down dog on your exhale. Left leg high, inhale. Cross it over, fall in triangle, exhale. Arm reaches back, bend, inhale. Hand down on your exhale. Two more, reach it and twist, inhale. Drop it down, exhale. Reach and twist, inhale. Hand down, exhale. Three-legged down dog on your inhale. Runners lunge, exhale. Back bend, hover knee, inhale. Back to runners lunge on your exhale. Two more. Back bend, hover knee, inhale. Runners lunge, exhale. Big breaths. Back bend, inhale. Skandasana to back on your exhale. High lunge, back bend on your inhale. Runners lunge on your exhale. Three leg dog on your inhale. Wild thing to lower on your exhale. Three legged dog on your inhale. Scorpion the foot, chaturanga on your exhale. Lift, inhale. Downward facing dog on your exhale. Left leg inhale, full and triangle exhale, reach the arm inhale, hand down on your exhale, three legged inhale, runners lunge on your exhale, back bend knee hovers inhale, skandasana on your exhale, high lunge on your inhale, Runners lunge, exhale. Three-legged inhale. Wild thing to lower on your exhale. Three rounds, wild thing, inhale. Lower the sit bones, exhale. Push it high on your inhale. Lower it, exhale. Lift, inhale. Lower, exhale. Three-legged down dog on your inhale. Scorpion chaturanga on your exhale. 
lift, inhale, down dog on your exhale. Drop the knees to the earth, come into Anahatasana, variation one or two, your choice. So you can have forehead on the floor or shimmy the hips further forward, belly and chin on the earth. So it's the upper part of the belly, lower part of the chest. Then you've got the hips lifted into the sky. Keep it there for three, for two, for one. Walking the hands back. Option one, you come into child's pose, fingertips together, thumbs to the back of the neck. Option two, you play with your dolphin or your pincher. So either leg can lift up, have the legs either split, or that back leg bent. You can use a wall. People in the studio, you can also use a wall. you got about 10 breaths to have a play. Nice cat to really point that toe of that left leg or the straight leg, whichever one that might be. If you feel comfortable in that pinch of my rasna, see if you can lift the head up, take the gaze a little bit further past the wrist. Past the fingertips, so you've got more of a back bend shape. Three more breaths. For two. For one. Down with facing dog. Release. Nice big breath in. And a big breath out. Gaze to the hand, step or jump the feet forward. Halfway lift, inhale, fold on your exhale. Reach the arms up, take a back bend on your inhale. Hands to heart center, exhale, lovely. Arms open wide, inhale. To the heart center, exhale. Round three, back bend, inhale. Hands down, forward fold on your exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Chaturanga on your exhale. Up dog or cobra, inhale. Downward facing dog on your exhale. Right leg lifts high, inhale. Fallen triangle leg on your exhale. Reach the arm and hold it here on that inhale. Really reaching the left fingertips over to the right as if it's more like a fallen star. Push the right hip up. See if you can allow the head to drop back. Keep it there for two. For one. Left hand to the earth. Exhale. Three-legged dog on your inhale. Runner's lunge on your exhale. Back bend the arms. Hover the knee. Inhale and hold it here. So allow that knee to lower, get into that left hip flexor and use the weight of the arms to make this a little bit more stronger. So you want the strength of the back bend, the spine is going to stay nice and strong or it will collapse. Keep that gaze there for two fingertips to the back of the room for one. Scan that in the back of mat on your exhale. High lunge, take a back bend on your inhale. Runner's lunge on your exhale. Three-legged dog, inhale. Scorpion the leg, if anybody's got a chin stand, take it on your exhale. Upward facing dog on your inhale. Downward facing dog on your exhale. Right leg lift, inhale. Cross it over on your exhale. Reach the arm back, bend, inhale. Hand down on your exhale. Three-legged dog, inhale. Runner's lunge on your exhale. Back, bend the arms, inhale. Skandasana to front on your exhale. High lunge to the front, hold it here. Interlace the fingers behind the head. 
Keep that back leg nice and straight. And then lean the head back. Take the elbows back. Squeeze the shoulder blades in. And then release it down, hands down. Three-legged down dog on your inhale. Wild thing, lower the hips on your exhale. Wild thing to lift, push the hips up high, hold it there for five breaths. You can be nice and light on the left toes. To three. For two, for one, three-legged down dog, inhale, chaturanga or maybe a chin stand on your exhale, up dog on your inhale, down with this in dog on your exhale, last round, last side, left leg lift, cross it over, fall and triangle, Reach the arm, hold it there, five nice big breaths. Both legs are straight, hips are lifted. Allow that right arm to be nice and heavy. Lovely, drop that hand down, three-legged down dog, lift it high. Runners lunge, step it through. Back bend, reach the arms, bend the knee and hold it there. So get low, low, low with that back knee. Lengthen the right hip flexor. Making sure you still got those lovely big belly breaths. Keep it there for three. For two. For one. Gandhasana, back of your mat on your exhale. Lovely, high lunge to the back on your inhale. Hands down to the earth on your exhale. Three-legged dog, inhale. Scorpion the foot or go chin stand on your exhale. Up dog on your inhale. Down dog on your exhale. Left leg reaches, inhale. Fall and triangle, exhale. Reach the arm, inhale. A hand down on your exhale. Three-legged inhale. Runner's lunge, exhale. Back bend on your inhale. Skandasana to front on your exhale. High lunge to the front, interlace fingers behind the head. Straighten the back leg and lean back and hold. Five breaths. Feeling the strength in that front leg. The stretch of the back leg. And then exhale, drop the hands down. Three-legged down dog on your inhale. Wild thing, hips lower on your exhale. Wild thing, push the hips nice and high. Five breaths to hold. You're on the ball of that right foot. Maybe you're even on the edge of the big toe. See if you can look towards the right thumb. Reach the fingertips to the earth for two. For one. Three-legged down dog, inhale. Scorpion or chin stand on your exhale. Up dog on your inhale. And then downward facing dog on your exhale. Anahatasana, drop the knees. Any variation, you could be on the forehead, you could be on the chest and the chin if you go a little further. Five breaths. And hold it there. Well, I'm actually sweating. Keep it there, keep the gaze. Maybe you have your eyes closed. Good. 
coming back, either taking a child's pose, fingertips together, thumbs to the back of the neck. Maybe down dog option for last inversion play. You can take forearm stand, you can take handstand. Same as what we did before, you can gaze down to set your inversion, reach that up the leverage leg back, and then play with your gaze, taking the gaze towards the top of your mat, maybe your skirting boards. Doesn't matter if the legs are split or one leg is bent. Reach one of the legs up and over. Using that wall as much as you need, whether that's in a forearm stand or in your handstand. Nice, Claire. Yes, beautiful cat. So that right heel now, you want to kick the right heel to your bum. Yes, and then straighten the left leg, point the left toes. Yeah, so the straighter that leg is, the easier it is to leverage over. Yes, that was good. Nice. Take a couple more breaths. And then find your way into your downward facing dog. Beautiful, Lisa. Amazing. Coming down with control. Hold your down dog for a breath in. And for a breath out. Gaze to the hand, step or jump the feet forward. Lengthen on your inhale. Fold on your exhale. Reach the arms or take a back bend on your inhale. Hands to center, exhale. Come in one standing balance. We'll take our dancer's pose. Catch the inside edge of the right foot. Take the left hand either onto the hip or extend it up and out. As if your body is a scale, push the foot into the hand, lift the toes. At the same time, you drop the chest. Keep that gaze down, but slightly forward. And then we're going to hold it here from now for five breaths. So that right arm wants to be pumping. The foot is being pushed into the arm so much. Reach the left fingertips up for three. Beautiful, lovely for two, for one, and release. Taking a forward fold, let the arms dangle or sway from side to side. Curling all the way up, taking it on the left side, catch inside edge of the left foot, right hand up. And then push the foot into the hand, reach the belly slightly down and forward. And then look down, but slightly forward. See if you can straighten that standing leg, if you've got the length in the back of the hamstring. Beautiful, Rachel. For three, lift the arm. Shine the chest to the front for two. For one. And release, hand to the floor on your exhale, forward fold. Half finished inhale, chaturanga, exhale, take it back. Lift, inhale, down dog on your exhale. Ripple the body forward through to your high plank and lower down onto your belly. Come into your ball pulls, catch the outside edges of the feet. Point the toes just like dancers. Push the feet into the hands and rise up. Five breaths. See if you can lift every part of the belly, every part of the chest. Maybe your gaze is forward. Maybe your gaze is towards the top corner of the room. Three breaths. For two. For one. And release. Push it back. Come into a child's pose. Extend the arms out. Forehead rest. Coming back into a kneeling pose. We're playing with our one arm camel posture. We're going to move dynamically. Something we do normally at the start of a class, but now we're nice and warm. We can really enjoy it. So take the right fingertips over to the right. Big inhale, left arm reaches up. 
exhale, swing the left arm through, center on an exhale, right arm reaches on your inhale, exhale through, inhale lift, maybe start to lift the hips already, you're pretty warm, exhale through center, inhale to lift, your pace, keep going, do about three or four more rounds, maybe you prefer to linger in one half a camel for a little longer, or maybe you prefer that dynamic movement. Make it your own expression of this practice. Feeling every side, body, muscle, every sensation in the spine. Really round in the back when you come forward, arch in the back when you go back. Take one more breath wherever you are. And then make your way into your downward facing dog. Big breath in. And big breath out. Okay, so the hands step or jump through to a seat. Extend the legs out in front. Arms reach up, inhale. Reach forward, forward, fold on your exhale. Belly to thigh, chest lift, gaze forward and shoulders back. Maybe you want to close the eyes. And then release, rising all the way up. Working your way down onto your back. We're going to do four rounds of back bends. So to start, either mini bridge or full wheel, whichever one you feel ready for. Feet hip distance apart and then push the floor away, lift the hips high. Find your first back bend. So five breaths, wherever you are. If it's mini bridge, hands can interlace or hands can wrap around the waist. For four. Wherever you are, whichever pulls, make sure it's a back bend for you as your spine gets more flexible. Mini bridge may not be so much of a back bend. Still an awesome pulse. But just know that. For two. For one. And release. Come down. Knee sway gently side to side. Second round again, either mini bridge or full wheel again, if you did it last time. When you're ready, prepare your pulls, push the hips up. If you don't want to go full, full wheel, you can take that little middle man, tuck the head under. Five breaths in your pulls. If you're in the full wheel, working on getting the shoulders above the wrists, feet parallel for three. For two. For one. And release, come down. Knee sway side to side. So anybody who's been doing full wheels, if you want to play with drop backs, third round, Mini bridge, full wheel, or you play with your drop backs on a wall or away from the wall. When you're ready, set the feet, find your back bend, five breaths. Lovely, Claire, wiggle the feet in, toes come in, heels go out. Look in between the thumbs if you can, nice cat. If it feels nicer to have the heels lifted in your full wheels, then go for it. Take two more breaths. And release, come down. Knee sway side to side. And getting ready for your final round. So I'm going to give an inversion option now. So if anybody wants to practice their inversion, the last round is going to be 10 breaths. 
So you can play forearm stand, handstand. The inversion would be your scorpion. So just like ball pulls on the floor, toes come together or apart. Your choice, bend the knees, look forwards. If you need a wall to do that, use a wall. Or you're finding your mini bridge or your back bend. When you are ready, rise up last round. This is for Monday morning. This is for everybody who's at work. Well, like, yeah, I'm doing back bends. <laughs> Sorry, busy back bend time. Nice. Yeah, the more you get that left leg over, the more you've got that split, that scale balance. Yes. Nice, cat. Half an inch more, you're not going to fall. Yes. Heel to bum, heel to bum. Yes, nice. That's so good. That was amazing. So when you get to that point, you're like, whoa, what do I do with my legs? <laughs> See if you can keep them split. Oh, not straight. I'm just doing flailing the leg. Keep the legs kind of bent but split. And you've got more of a scale. Yeah. When you are ready, come down. Nice hold, guys. Taking a vinyasa at your own pace. We'll all meet in downward facing dog. Taking a lovely deep breath in in your down dog. And deep breath out. Right leg reaches high on an inhale. One legged pigeon on your exhale. Step it through. Knee off to the right in comparison to the hip. And then walk the fingertips back. So you're finding a back bend for five breaths. Whether that means fingers on the floor, hands up, or maybe hands interlaced behind the head. So if we're not with the chest on the floor, then this pause is a back bend. So it doesn't matter how high you are right now. Keeping it there for three. For two. For one. Sleeping swan, option to walk the hands over to the left, option to take um, thread the needle, left arm through, left side of the head on the earth. Notice in the gradual decrease, the pace of the breath, the temperature of the body. What is it that fills your mind right now? How hard is it? How easy is it for you to stay in the present moment? How do you respond to your yoga practice? Is it with comparison? Or is it with love? Is it with kindness? Walking the hands back, hands underneath the shoulders, taking that right leg back into your downward facing dog. Left leg reaches on your inhale, one legged pigeon exhale. Five breaths in that upright position. Maybe keep the eyes closed as you get there. Remember, one side's always going to feel different. In this pose, making sure that both of the sit bones are slightly lifted so you've got a bit of buoyancy in the pose. Mm. 
And then release. Hands walk over to the top right corner. Option for thread the needle. Right arm goes underneath the left. Taking the right side of the head to the earth. Extend the left arm out. Taking three more breaths. And then walking the hands back, rise up, swing that right leg around and come all the way down to lying on your back. Squeezing the thighs in towards the belly, tuck the head towards the knees. Gently rocking the body from side to side and then gradually lower the head towards the earth. Once the head reaches, find your Shavasana. Arms extend, legs extend. Lovely big breath in. And lovely big breath out. Take another one if you need. And then fully relax on your mat, your reward after your efforts in your practice. A time to breathe, a time to be still. A time to reflect not just on your physical capabilities, but more so on how the mind reacted, how you responded, your thoughts, your emotions during your own personal practice. Super rare in this busy world to spend 60 minutes in silence. Having some you time. Can we learn to love? Can we learn to appreciate that precious time when it's just us? We learn to love ourselves, and then we've got so much love in our heart to give to others.
of the next three to five breaths. Starting to deepen your breath. Bring ever so subtle movement back into the body. Taking a full body stretch, reaching the arms up overhead, point the toes, reach the fingers high. Thighs towards the belly, giving yourself a well-deserved hug, spread all the love around yourself. And then when you're ready, rocking up into a seated position, kneeling all legs crossed, hands together towards your heart center. And my teacher always said, when you bring the hands together, the fingertips are together, the lower parts of the wrists are together, but everything in the middle is a space. And that space is kept for your purpose, your reason to roll out your yoga mat. You don't need to tell anybody why you're here, whether it's aesthetic, physical, whether it's mental or emotional reasons. Keep it close to your heart. Have it locked up. No one needs to know. Making sure that you do your yoga for you. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Side out through the mouth. Have a wonderful day. You are all awesome. Namaste, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Have a lush Monday. <laughs>